Hey guys, this is K2's Retro Workshop. Today we're going to be messing with this 486 system here. It's got a VESA local bus video card that's been upgraded to 2 megabytes. I've got a Sound Blaster 16 in here, network cards, some other stuff. What I want to demonstrate today is the different is the true difference between a 486 DX2 and a Pentium Overdrive. There's already a lot of comparisons online that do this, but a lot of stuff came out in the mid 90s that was optimized for Pentiums. And a lot of the comparison videos that I've seen tend to glaze over some of that stuff where they weren't able to get it to work. Uh, Quake is a really good example of this. It's optimized for the floating point unit in the Pentium and it makes a significant difference. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna run some programs with the DX2 and then the Pentium Overdrive. I've got my new VGA card going for capturing video straight from the video card on this and we'll put them side by side we'll see what a couple time demos and benchmarks look like so here we have our benchmark side by side left dx266 right pentium overdrive there's a 27 percent difference between the clock speeds here but there's a 51% difference in this particular benchmark. A lot of that's going to have to do with the superscalar technology, the dual input pipelines of the Pentium. Doom doesn't stack in that pipeline, I think, as, as efficiently. So here you've got only a 36% difference, which most of that is made up for by your clock speed difference. The superscalar architecture allowed two input pipelines, so the Pentium can stack uh, instructions and it's a bit more efficient than the 486. The floating point unit was also greatly enhanced and it had uh, better efficiency, more functions, stuff like that. Doom doesn't take advantage of any of that. And let's be honest, the max you can play Doom at in gameplay was 35 FPS and nobody was buying a $500 processor to get seven more FPS. Uh, this was more of an option for people that already had a PCI enabled socket 3 motherboard and they didn't want to pay another five grand for a new computer just a year or two after they had just bought one. So that's kind of who this was targeting. I think you know the higher clock 486s and stuff were an option but without the Pentium optimization as we'll see in Quake right here it makes a huge difference having that Pentium architecture. You know we've got less than 8 FPS on the DX2 and over 16 on the 80 on the Pentium Overdrive. The difference is huge and it really comes down to the Quake engine being optimized for both the dual input pipeline and the floating point unit. You know, we've got the same exact motherboard here between these two, remember. Got the same VESA video card, you've got the same um bus speed all of the settings are the same except for like the five jumpers i have to change to go from the dx2 to the pentium overdrive and if you have a pci enabled motherboard you could have even gone so far as to put a voodoo one in this machine with a pentium overdrive 83 and a pci bus you you had a few quite a few years of usefulness out of this thing what started off as a 486 dx2 would end up being a machine that could run you know, Tomb Raider and stuff like that. There were, you know, options, like I said earlier, you know, for a 133 or even 166 megahertz 486. You know, those offerings from AMD were there. But even clock speed differences, I don't believe, will make up the difference with this 113% spread that we have here. Now, there is another Pentium Overdrive that's a 63 megahertz unit, which is two and a half times the 25 megahertz bus. It's pretty decent, too. Um, it will decimate a 66 as well, you know, almost clock for clock. I didn't put that one in because it has a bus speed change and it does affect the um, bandwidth for the VS VESA slot and stuff. But that's all I have in this video. If you have any comments or questions, post them below. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.